Welcome to episode 161 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host, and we're marking the one year anniversary of the first lockdown. We know what you've been through. I wanna know what you've learned. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So this week had me thinking back, had a lot of people thinking back because it is the one year anniversary, roughly, of uh, when the first lockdowns happened. I live in New York State and it was about this week last year when we got word that we were no longer allowed to come into the office. And just like a week or two prior to the lockdowns, I think all of us were thinking like, nah, that can't happen. They can't like tell people not to go into work. Why? Because it never happened before. I distinctly remember the last day uh, when we had to close everything down because I posted this social media post of me like punting a football as hard as I could when I walked out the front door. We're going to roll it right here. But it just expressed my frustration and my anger over the fact that there was nothing that I could do about it. So I thought it would be good in this one year in, you've all been through it. We've all been through it together, even though we've all had different experiences going through it to talk for just a few minutes about what it is that we've learned through the pandemic, mostly things that we wouldn't have learned had there not been a pandemic. So I'm going to talk about three things that I've learned, and I hope you can relate to it. If not, uh, maybe give you a little more perspective on what you're thinking. And I'd love to hear what it is that you've learned. So for me, I think the first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that fear is more powerful, much more powerful than I ever realized before. Now, fear is a great motivator, and we know this, and fear keeps us away from ledges on tall buildings, and fear keeps us away from things that can hurt us. And you know, sometimes fear keeps us away from good things as well. But what we saw during the lockdown, I think, is that fear running wild can affect us in life pervasively. And I never realized how powerful fear was until the unknown really set upon our country and our, our planet, actually, in a really, in a way which we've never seen in, in our lifetime, in my lifetime anyway. You know, I realized that people and humans are willing to trade freedom, something that we care about a lot here in the States, and something that our country was founded on. And we're willing to trade freedoms for a semblance of security, not even security, but we're willing to trade freedom for security. And that goes across the board. You know, when you you feel like you're in danger, you know, well, then I'd rather be alive than free is really the trade-off that happens. And I watch that happen over and over and over again. And I realized that that's not only there, but even think about the ways that that applies to people who are starting a business or trying something new and the freedom that it could represent doing things a new way, trying a new routine with your family, the freedom that you might get from that, you're willing to trade that for the security of what is known. That's why people stay in, I don't know, abusive relationships because they're willing to trade freedom for some semblance of security. So I, I, I learned that. I saw it in a new way. I don't know if you did. I don't know uh, what you feel about that. I think you'll come to terms with the fact that it's true. Next, I realized that it really does take intentional, positive inputs to keep your mindset moving forward and in a good place. You know, if fear was more powerful than I realized, and you can go on and read the long litany of health detriments when you succumb to so much fear. It's terrible. It's really bad for a human and a human body and human physiology to succumb to fear. So if that's the case, fear puts us in a negative mindset. It puts us in a fearful mindset. It puts us in a mindset that is not thinking clearly. And so it took me a lot of intentional, positive thinking in order to keep my mindset able to function. And some days I won the battle and some days I lost the battle, but the intention to do it is what really kept things going. And now rolling out of the pandemic, that positivity, and that mindset actually is serving me really, really well when things aren't as fearful and aren't as difficult. You know, a lot, a lot of people think of positive thinking and positivity as like, oh, that's frou-frou stuff. You know, it's just wishful thinking more than positive thinking, and it doesn't really work. Well, imagine, you know, what it's like when you, you are looking to buy a certain type of car. Say uh, you're buying a Honda Accord, and you've never really paid much attention to them before, but you decide that's the car you want. So you're like, I'm buying a Honda Accord. And then all of a sudden, what happens 
on the road. What do you see on the road? Well, you see Honda Accords everywhere, especially if you buy one. Are there more Honda Accords on the road after you bought one? No, really, they're not. But your mindset now is oriented to see them because you were paying attention to Honda Accords for so long. And the same is true with positive thinking and surrounding yourself with positive thinking and positive mentality. When you learn to see the upside of things and you choose to see the upside, you actually start seeing the upside in even difficult situations. And what that does is free you up to think. It frees you from the fear because you realize all of life is like there's upsides and there's downsides and you get to choose your mentality. You know, people say, I can't help the way I feel, but guess what? Yes, you can because our feelings are driven by our thoughts and we can choose what we are going to think. Now, I'm not saying that it is, it's always possible to override that mechanism in your head, but I can say that the practice of doing that over a period of time and on a regular basis has affected the way I can problem solve, approach problems, and it's affected my mood, my mentality, the way I can serve the people around me, specifically my family. So that's the second thing that is in ta it takes real intentional intentionality to keep my thinking oriented in a positive way, especially in a dire time. I also learned this, and this is probably the one that, that I really value and I think is going to carry forward for the rest of my life, and that is common struggles bring common people closer to one another. So common struggles bring common people closer to one another and closer than ever over this last year. I have found more like-minded thinkers because the crisis brought us closer. The crisis made us vulnerable. And I think that when we found that we had these common grounds, we realized that we were stronger as a result of being together and moving forward. You know, I had Dr. Nicole Lipkin on the show uh, a while back, and she talked about this concept of mental agility and mental agility being the ability to think clearly about the other person's perspective, being willing and able to hear the other perspective without immediately going into fear, immediately going into defense mode. And I found it to be true. When you work on that ability, it actually builds relationship. It actually builds bridges. And with all the polarized political environment, you realize like the one side or the other side is never going to solve the problem. And I don't have enough control to really pull those areas and like affect these things. And I don't agree with so much that's gone on over the last year and so much that is going on now, but I've decided that I can choose to move things in the better direction as I see it. I can choose to move things in the direction of courage and not fear in the direction of freedom and not bondage, in the direction of positive mentality and not negative defensive thinking, in the direction of bringing people closer together so that we can serve one another as opposed to constantly drawing lines that you have to stay on that side and I have to stay on that side. So here we are one year in and all of that came as a result of a really, really challenging 12 months, starting when they said, you can't even go in the work. You have to stay home. I like to think of it as a transaction of growth is what I, what I call it. Growth takes something. You have to actually give something in order to get the growth. It never just comes free. And boy, was that the truth over the last 12 months. I know it is the truth for you. If you're still here, you're still watching and listening and trying and learning. Let's keep on that path together. Let's keep going forward in those things together. I hope you'll hit me up on, on social media, on Instagram, LinkedIn. Let me know what you learned. Let's, I'll share some of that stuff. Let me know what you learned. I'd love to share it with everybody else. I'd love to have a conversation about it. And so just thank you for being on this journey. Thanks for giving me some of your time and some time to this community. I'm doing a lot of new things. Uh, now I'm on the Clubhouse app, uh, starting a new group. It's called Automotive State of the Union. If you go to my profile and scroll down on Clubhouse, you'll see that club there. I hope you join it. Had just had an amazing room today, and we're going to start doing regular everyday rooms. And that's for the automotive industry, but other around a lot, also around a lot of topics you may be interested in. So um, check it out there. Until next time, I hope you keep pushing for clarity, for that perspective, and more importantly, I hope you can keep serving one another and the people around you. I will see you next week. Histories made.